what's up guys it's your boy that kid rbm back at you guys with another video so what i wanted to do today was i wanted to kind of show you guys and tell you guys my full build list for my 2007 honda civic si that is fully type r uh converted fd2 so i'm gonna be going through exterior mods performance mods interior engine bay i'm also going to be listing in the description some good websites that you guys can purchase some of these parts from and i'm also going to be going through the process of how i got to this uh how the car was when i first bought it to how it is now as well as touching upon what i want to do towards the next upcoming season since it is already november and i gotta put the car away in a few weeks so let's get right to it to the first part all right so before i get started with the parts that i have on the car i kind of wanted to show you guys how the car was when i first bought it so like i had mentioned it is a 2007 honda civic si sedan um and i bought it this year march 23rd 2021 um and as you guys can see the car was pretty much basically stock it was just on some cheap coilovers which i do still have on the car i'm waiting for my bcs to come in um so as you guys can see it was pretty stock just uh it was galaxy gray um looked overall pretty good condition on the outside but now i'm going to show you guys how the car was before i did buy it so as you guys can see the car had some front end collision um the car was totaled i believe it was in january and i picked it up i picked it up all fixed up in march so um yeah i bought it in march all fixed up got it for a really good price so i was like you know what man might as well just build it up this is i've been wanting a civic sign for a while now and um uh, my guy at the shop took care of all the stuff that we had to so now let's get into what we have in the car now So in no particular order, I'm gonna be going through the parts that I have in the car now So it goes all the way from some stuff like the performance mods interior mods Including some of the stuff I have in the engine bay and then of course exterior cosmetic mods Like I said um, at the end of the video I'm gonna be showing you guys or telling you guys some of the good websites you guys can get some OEM parts If you guys want some aftermarket replica parts, you know do you it's your build I'll be putting uh, those in the description as well. And like I said, I'll be talking about them as well uh, So first let's start off with the performance mods we have on the car So like I said in no particular order, this is just the list that I have So the first thing we have on the car are some stop tech carbon ceramic brake pads so i picked these up along with the stop tech slotted rotors i really like the look of the slotted rotors a bit more and as you guys can see these rotors have a black coating um where the hub of the wheel is that prevents it from i'm assuming just getting rusted and overall it looks better and i like these better than um the drilled and slotted rotors so i picked those up Next thing we have on the list is Nitto NT05 performance tires. So these tires are 235-40-17. Um, they do the job well. Um, I had ordered some Toyo, I forget which exact ones they were, but I had ordered Toyos first um, and then they got back ordered. So they actually sent me these for like 300 cheaper than what I paid for it, just for the inconvenience. So um, these do the job. These are performance summer tires. So. They still have a good amount of thread left after all the times I do burn it on it, so they're good how they are right now. Next thing that we have is a hybrid racing fuel rail with the pressure gauge. So this is a little bit of the engine based stuff, but it, it counts as performance. I'm going to include it in this part of the video. Um, so I picked this up. I have to readjust my gauge because it's a little bit, it's a little bit wonky how it is right now. You could say. Uh, the next part is a full three inch custom cap back exhaust so on the exhaust it's a full three inch piping i got my piping done i lose custom exhaust and dairy shout out to my boy uh jason great guy um next thing i have on that exhaust is a vibrant resonator that i got from my boy francisco at mb auto performance shout out to him and then the last part i have is obviously the exhaust tip or the muffler which is a k2 three inch exhaust uh, i believe it's a three inch inlet and a three inch outlet uh, so right now i'll throw in uh, a sound clip of how it sounds
next thing on the list for the performance is a Skunk 2 cold air intake. So this is probably one of my favorite mods of the car because like honestly, when VTEC kicks in, you can hear it and you can feel the difference with this. Uh, it's a full, th I think it's a 3.5 inch, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Uh, it's a full cold air intake so it goes all the way down to where my um, bumper is. And great thing about how my front fascia is set up, there's a vent right in front of where the intake is so it gets as much air as possible next thing on the car we have some SPC rear upper control arms and these ones I actually picked them up from AutoZone so in AutoZone they do have stock well they have SPC uh, rear camera arms which I didn't know that they had uh, next thing I have going into the interior a little bit is a hybrid racing V2 shifter so I bought this car with a gold shifter um, and then my boy Jason was selling a red one I was like you know what my car is w red white and black so I just grabbed the, this brand new red one um, great shifter honestly this is like I said this is one of my favorite parts of the car this changes the driving feel completely going from this uh, well this car came with a short shifter but shifting with those stock shifters it makes a huge difference having that short shifter there next thing on the car are my skunk 2 racing alpha headers so i installed these two days ago and these things they make a really big difference so got them hooked up right to my exhaust and they're pretty loud um you guys probably heard in the exhaust clip it's a little bit louder than what i'm used to just because i'm used to you know not driving you know crazy loud cars but uh, it was one of the last parts I needed for my bolt-ons. One thing I am missing, uh, it's still back ordered, is my Honda Flash Pro V4. So I've been waiting on that to come in, and then after that, I'll be full bolt-ons. Don't ask me why I did everything backwards. I should've got Honda first, but it is what it is. And then the last thing on the performance mods is my rear Hasport 78 motor mount. So I bought this mount really quickly just because I heard that if you don't run a rear quote unquote solid mount, the headers tend to break just because of all the pressure that it puts on the motor. I will be ordering my front rear, front passenger side and driver side 78 hash port mounts. Um, I just got the rear one quickly just because I forgot to order it. But for next season, I'll definitely have those other three mounts. All right, so now moving on to the interior mod. So the first thing that we have is a Type R cluster. So this isn't the full cluster, this is just an overlay that I got online. Um, I couldn't find my hands, I couldn't get my hands on a full cluster, so I just decided to get this, does the job. Next thing that we have on the list is the FD2 Type R shift knob that we have paired up to our hybrid racing V2 short shifter. Um, it's a great feel to uh, shifting, I guess you could say that, I don't know if that makes sense, but you guys probably know what I mean. Next thing that we have is the FD2 hazard light switch. So as you guys can see, this hazard light switch is a red switch. It's the same thing. It's just the FD2 one compared to the dark gray or black Civic Si one that they come with stock. Next thing that we have are my quote unquote Type R red door inserts. So these aren't actually Type R uh, door inserts. I just got some fabric. At, I think it was Joanne's. Wrapped it myself. I painted the silver trims on the door and the door handles flat black um it does the job i gotta redo it because there's some parts that look a little bit messy but that looks good for right now next thing that we have in the interior are my type r seats so as you guys can see these are not fd2 type r seats these are fn2 type r seats the only reason why i got these ones well i should have done my research better so when i went to go purchase them the seller did tell me that they were fd2 type r seats i hadn't noticed that there was a huge difference in them the differences are that the inserts are a darker red instead of a brighter red like the FD2 has. And the back of the seat is uh, like a fabric material. And the FD2 ones, I believe they are leather. But these are pretty close to um, the FD2 Type R seats. I already had them in hand, so I wasn't going to, you know, give the guy any problems. He didn't know what he was selling, I guess. So I got that done to it. I did have to get custom brackets done for the bottom of the seats because the FN2 Type R doesn't have the same... Uh, mounting brackets as the FD2 Type R has uh, so that's that next as you guys can tell we have the Sparco four point competition harnesses uh, I love these things um, right now I just have the four point harness I didn't want the fifth one down near my crotch because you know I gotta put these kids for later on in life um, so I have that and then as you guys can probably see I have my seatbelt kind of 
wrapped around the back of my seat because I don't like the seatbelt light turning on, but I'm probably going to go to the junkyard, cut off um, cut off a seatbelt, and then just put it in there. Obviously, I'll have the harnesses on when I'm doing that because it's be safe. Uh, next thing we have is a Braum racing harness. So with this, it's a universal Braum racing harness, but it does need a little bit of custom work to fit in the Civic Si. So I had to cut um, some the pillar on the top and the pillar on the bottom to make it fit perfectly. Um, I noticed that these are mostly geared towards Evo 10s and WRXs because I didn't see too much cutting when people were installing it on their cars, but I did get it to work really well um, with my car. Next thing we have is a CSX center console. So I got this straight from Japan. Um, it's very similar to the Type R center console. Just doesn't have the Type R uh, badge on it. Um, and it looks great in my opinion. Uh, next thing we have is my leather back seats and my armrest. So as many of you guys may know, this car, the Civic Si that I have, it came with full a full leather interior. I was told that it was um, a factory option or uh, outsourced option for these cars um i sold the fronts i'm going to be selling the backs because i am going to be getting stock si seats and i'm going to be redoing the inserts to match the inserts on my front seats um quick little plug if you're from the boston area and you do have rear si seats and um an armrest do hit me up i'm looking for that as well um next thing the car already came with this but it's a pioneer carplay double din radio um, I just like it because I can use Waze and my music. It's um, it's not Bluetooth, but it has my iPhone cable right there. Next thing we have is my Rexon backup camera and dash cam. So basically, it's wired up. Well, it's connected right to the OEM uh, mirror inside. So it has a dash cam in the front, and then I actually wired the rear, the rear reverse camera all the way to my trunk. I do have an FD2 trunk, so I already had a hole for the camera, so I basically just put the rear camera where that hole was already at, and then that's basically it for the interior mounts. Alright, so next on the list is the engine bay. So the first thing we have here is a custom Mugen valve cover. So sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but I got this from Charlie Mua, I think it's pronounced. Um, he's a great seller on uh, on Facebook. I believe he also has Instagram. I'll try to link that stuff down below. So he's mainly known for powder coating this stuff. So I got mine powder coated in candy red. As you guys can see, I also have um, a Mugen engraving in it. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't do this stuff yet. He doesn't do like the engraving yet because something happened with whoever was doing it for him. I actually have one of the last ones that he ever engraved. So um, big shout out to him and I'm thankful to have that. Next thing we have on top of this is a Mugen oil cap. Um, these things are expensive. I paid like a hundred something dollars for it, but hey, it's OEM Mugen and I think it looks nice. I believe this is the champagne gold color. Next thing we have here is a K-tuned dipstick. Uh, I paid a lot for this too. It's uh, yeah, it's a dipstick. It's a K2 dipstick. Um, next thing we have, one of my favorite parts in the engine bay, kind of. Uh, so these are Zerg CF hood dampers. So basically, they just replace the hood strut and the, I guess you could call it the OEM dampers. Well, mostly the hood strut that's on the car. So these are fully carbon fiber, and they just, you know, it makes it so you don't have to use the hood strut. And I really like these because the car makes it look better and it goes up automatically I can kind of put it at whatever position I want um, and then the last thing that we have in here is a K2 battery tie down um, like I said it's just a battery tie down with a K2 stamp on it and then obviously have my uh, yellow top battery all right so now to my exterior mods so obviously I do have a front and a rear uh, OEM type R conversion kit so like I said, I'll link down a couple a couple places where you guys can get this stuff. Um, I got my front bumper local. I got my side skirts, front lip, and rear bumper um, online. I got my fenders with the uh, turn signals and my trunk. I got those from DR, uh, also JDM, also JDM parts on Instagram. Go check them out. And I got my hood local, so my hood is the only thing that isn't FD2, it's an FD1 hood. You can tell because the FD2 hood has two body lines that run straight down that kind of follow the same body line as the front bumper, so I'm definitely going to be getting an FD2 hood later on. And I got the Type R 
uh, spoiler straight from Japan. I think I paid 10, 1100 for it, somewhere around there. They're pretty rare. Um, thanks that I grabbed that um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it for the FD2 conversion kit. So the next thing that we have is my most most expensive mod, excuse me. So they're my Volk CE20 SL wheels. So I picked these up from a buddy up in Nashua. Uh, these are 17 by 9 plus 22 on the Nitto Neo Gens that I told you guys that I have. Or Nitto NT05, sorry about that. Um, so I just really like how these, these look. These are the SL models, so you guys can see. They're the, I think it's called brushed aluminum, titanium. I don't know, correct me down in the comments. And it has the right stickers that I really like. It complements the rest of the car. Uh, like I said, I have the Mugen front lip on the front. I have the Type R side skirts, Type R rear bumper. Um, and then coming back to the front of the car, I have a custom Mugen front plate. So this, um, I'll throw up a screen, I'll throw up a picture on the screen of how I did it. So I basically just took some, I think it's just some acrylic from Home Depot. I cut it to the same size. I put some uh, bolts in it and then I sprayed it with, I think it's bed liner. And then I super glued a Mugen metal badge on the front of it. I like how it looks. A lot of people ask me if I make any more. I do not make any more, but it's pretty easy to make. Um, like I said, that picture's up there so you guys can screenshot it and it's a good DIY project, I would say. Uh, next thing that we have are my Muteki SR48 lug nuts. These lug nuts pretty much match the wheels perfectly. They're the same titanium, not titanium, what is it called? I'm having a brain fart right now. The same color as my wheels. Oh, it's like a gunmetal color. And I forgot to mention this in this performance mods, but I also do have uh, my extended studs. They are ARP. I got those from Pep Boys. Uh, next thing that we have on the exterior is are my Mugen door handle protectors. So I got these online as well. These are OEM from Mugen. Um, I like the look of them. They're carbon fiber, or they're semi-carbon fiber looking. Uh, they have a Mugen badge on them. And um, I guess they just look good. They protect the door if, you know, you have someone wearing rings, you know, they're gonna put their hands in there, they're gonna scratch the paint, but that protects it from that. Um, and then we also have my Mugen visors. I believe I picked these up from King Motorsports, if I'm not incorrect. Like I said, I'm gonna put a bunch of descriptions down, put, put a bunch of links down in the description, sorry about that, um, on where to get them, but I love these visors. Um, I like the look of them. They follow the body line of the car, in my opinion, as well. And yeah, that's pretty much uh, for that. And then the last thing I have, um, I just put it down, is um, some 15% tint. Um, I have 15 on the back, the sides. I did have 50% it was on the front, but I did take it off. The only reason why I did take it off was so you guys can see my interior more. Because, you know, why spend so much money on an interior if you're going to hide it with tint? I'm going to keep it on the sides though, I need my privacy, but that's basically it for the exterior mods. Alright, so a lot of you guys may be asking how much I've spent on the car already with all those parts. There's obviously a little bit more nitpicky stuff and a bunch of other stuff that I didn't list. Um, but so far, I write everything down. So far, I've spent, with paint, labor, all this other stuff, all the parts that I have, I've spent a little over $18,000. <laughs> on the car i mean it's an investment in my opinion um i'm not gonna let this car go i want to build it up ground up you guys saw how it was you guys saw how it was before i bought it it was completely just you know messed up so you know what am i gonna do about it so it is what it is um so now i kind of want to go into some of the stuff that i'm planning to do on the car um upcoming year so it's 2021 now I'm gonna be putting the car away uh in a few weeks so First, before I do decide to boost the car, I do want to not fully build the motor, but I want to build the motor up to a decent amount. So I have a list, again, it's not in order, but um, some of the stuff I need to get. So I have to get my Honda Data Flash Pro, still waiting on that to complete my FBO. I am going to be getting some BC Racing coilovers, um, as well as some TL Type S uh, Brembo brake kit. So I'm going to get those from DC5 Creations on Instagram. Um, I'm gonna make them so they match the same color that I have right now, the candy red. 
Um, with that, I'm going to be getting some TL Type S slotted rotors. I believe those are, I think they're from, I think he, he, I think he has some of those for sale. But if not, I'll just get some stop tech ones so they can match the ones I have in the rear. Um, with those big rotors, I believe they're four piston. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not too thinking about this uh, performance stuff. Um, but I do need a TL Type S brake master cylinder. Um, that's because they're just bigger brakes. So I always need some more power to, you know, make the brakes work, you could say. Um, like I said, I am going to be getting an FD2R hood. I'll be selling this one right after. Um, next on the list is a TFT, no, Type S oil pump. Um, this is a bunch of parts that I told that I was told to get, you know, go fast parts. Uh, I am going to be porting my RBC manifold after I get my K-tuned 72 millimeter throttle body. I'm going to be getting it ported by my guy Z-Flow. Shout out to him. I'll also be getting uh, some Grams 1000cc injectors, uh, a Wall Bro fuel pump. I believe it's the 525. Let's see what else. I did mention that I'm going to be getting the passenger, driver, and front motor mount from Hasport uh, 70A, and then the front one, I think it's 75A. I'll also be getting a Mishimoto radiator because this one's disgusting. Disgusting! And as well, I'll be getting some 06 to 08 TSX cams for a little extra boost in power. And then 2023, I'm planning to boost the car. I still don't really know what I want to do if I want to go turbo or if I want to go supercharger. I'd say turbo for more power, five to seven, maybe crazy pushing it. Um, I've heard from a supercharger like Craftsworth, you can get anywhere from 350. 400 if you're pushing it 450 to 500 500 on a crafts work i would say you're completely pushing it i would not do that um with boosting it i'm obviously gonna build my transmission so i think i'm gonna be getting gear x ppg or m factory gears one through four um those are like 1500 to five thousand dollars just for the gears and the synchros and all that stuff but that's basically it this is my car. That's all the stuff that I have done to the car. You guys saw how it was, what I have planned up for next season, and what I have planned up for the one after that. So thank you guys again for watching. I hope you guys liked the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video with your friends. Um, stay tuned for the next one and check you guys out.